Blessings, Bless everyone. Blessings, blessing, blessing. This is Apostle David King, Dr. David King. I am the Great Lakes Region, uh, Great Lakes Region Regional Director for the Full Gospel Businessman. And my guest today is none only the Northeast Regional Director, John D. Berry. God bless you, sir. How are you tonight? I'm doing great. It's a wonderful life. Doing it is great. a wonderful life. I like that. I like that. It is a wonderful life. Um, before, we, be, before we get started, everyone, um, I do not own the rights to this music, but I'm going to put it up here anyway so people can see that we do not own the rights to this music. But before we start, we want to start with a little worship. So uh, we're going to play a little worship music, and then we're going to go right into our show today. We're excited to have all of y'all here with us. Um, if y'all can see, I am under the banner of love, the full gospel uh, businessman fellowship banner. That, As y'all can see, I am under it. And I'm trying to adjust my camera that y'all will be able to see it all. Okay, there you go. Let, let me just see that. Let me move out y'all way. I want y'all to see that. See, there y'all go. We are, his banner over us is love. The banner over us is love. Amen. Amen. So, so we're gonna, we're gonna uh, play a worship song and then we're gonna go into prayer and then we're going to get started with our show. As y'all see on the banner, we do not own the rights to the song, but we do have the right to worship. you go. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you, God. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come, we pray for every leader in government right now. We pray, God, that you will touch their hearts and their mind, that they will govern according to your word, that they will go, to, go that they will govern according to your love, oh God. We pray, Father God, for everyone in leadership, oh God. We pray, Father God, for the bereaved families, those that are mourning the loss of a loved one, Father God. We pray that you will comfort them. We pray for everyone, Lord, that are sick and shut in, oh God. We pray, Father God, for every business owner that, that is struggling right now, Lord, that you would touch their, their mind and give them fresh ideas, divine ideas, divine revelation, oh God, how to operate their business right now in the name of Jesus. We pray for every family right now, God, every husband, every wife, every child, oh God that you would be in the midst of the homes, oh God. We pray, Father God, that you would be in the midst of the community, oh God, and even our cities, oh God. We pray for safety, we pray for peace. We pray for your joy to be released in our nation again like never before, <clears throat> in the mighty name of Jesus. So Father, in this show today, we ask you, oh God, to have your way, and we give you all the praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name, amen. 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 I, I, I thank everybody for watching from Facebook, Periscope, YouTube. Uh, we thank each and every one of you for, for, um, for being with us today. And some of you probably wondering, what is this Full Gospel Businessman Fellowship International? So right now we're going to have Mr. I was about to call him Dr. John D. Berry. Uh, he is the Northeast Regional Director for the Full Gospel Baptist, uh, Full Gospel Men's Businessman Fellowship. And so he's going to tell you guys a little bit about what is the Full Gospel Businessman Fellowship. Go ahead, Mr. D. Berry. Hey, Amen. Again, I want to thank you guys, <clears throat> Dr. King, for giving me this opportunity to share with your people up in the uh, Midwestern part of the United States. Four Gospel, first I want to give you a little bit about the history. Four Gospel is an organization that was started back in 1952 by a guy named Demon Shakarian. Demon got a vision from God. Uh, he saw, he had, actually had two visions. One vision, the, the initial vision was he saw men, Christian men walking around with their heads down and pitiful. And then he had another vision, saw men walking around praising God with their hands up and stuff like that. So he gave Demas a vision, uh, gave him a, a, a ministry, put a ministry in him that to let him know that God wanted his Christian men, his followers, to be uplifted, to be successful, to be prosperous. So he started this organization back in 1952, particularly for that reason. And at that time, he was focused on men. The first year he started the organization, it didn't go well. Uh, they struggled. Trying to do things in his own. There was a lot of people that were with him, stepped away from it. And one guy told him uh, after that first year, so I wouldn't give you a nickel for this organization. 
and the guy was in San Francisco. <clears throat> the, that Thursday night, the guy had a vision, <clears throat> had a dream, and God showed him uh, full gospel and what it's supposed to be. And that guy drove from San Francisco to uh, uh, Los Angeles uh, that Friday and got there that Saturday morning and gave a thousand dollars to the organization because of yeah. what God has shown him. And Demas himself was going to stop, was going to close down the organization. To God came to him again and say, "Look, you try to do it in your own spirit. Now let me let, just give me the go, give me the rings." And now we're in a. At one time we was in 140 countries throughout the world. I think now we're in about 120. But the exciting thing about this organization is, I think it was 2017. I'm not sure of the number since then, but in 2017, over 4 million people came to Christ through this organization yeah. <clears throat> throughout the world. So that's what we've been doing for uh, ever since 1952. I just tell people simply, it's men helping men. <clears throat> now we've increased it to the women of the fellowship. We've got a women's size of the organization, which is growing rapidly. We're in uh, 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 Mexico, uh, Central America, South America, Africa, uh, Asia, Europe. We're in all the continents. And we are so excited about what God is doing with this organization throughout the world. So it would be great for you to join this organization if you want to be about God's business. Yes. yes. And you know, and you know when you talk about uh 1952 when he was getting ready to stop. The thing that I loved about it, not only did the gentleman that God touched brought a thousand dollars that day, but the same day God touched another man's heart and he drove all the way down and he offered his printing company and printed the, the magazine called Voice. Right. And I happen to have two copies of The Voice right now. So if anybody want a copy of The Voice, I have the spring and the summer edition of The Voice. Let me go back and make sure I got them both. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Uh, of The Voice, you can have um, a copy of The Voice. And on The Voice, we have Ted, Ted, Ted DiBiase. I got to look at my hand. Now. Ted DiBiase, the million dollar man and George Foreman, two men of God who has a powerful testimony about how God touched their lives. So we are offering anyone that want a copy, all you have to do, I'm gonna put up information in a minute to contact us and you can contact, contact us and you will be able to have a copy of The Voice magazine. I was saying both copies, I was saying you the spring and the summer copy and George Foreman and Ted DiBiase's story. It is amazing stories of both of these men of God. And and and, and Brother D, uh, D. Berry, I sum it up this way. Full Gospel Businessman Fellowship International is, a, is in the business of soul winning. Amen. It's in the business of soul winning. They be like, what do y'all do? Soul win. Amen. You know, God take ordinary men to do extraordinary things. And that is the most powerful thing that um, that really have uh, uh, um, got me excited and got me hyped because of what God is doing through ordinary people. You don't have to have a title. You don't have to be an apostle and a prophet, an evangelist, pastor or teacher. You can be a businessman. You can be a janitor. You can be anybody uh, and doing anything. And God says, all I need you to do is be willing to allow me to use you. Amen. You know, so so I'm excited about that. And, and, and right now, it might be somebody on YouTube. It might be somebody on Periscope. It might be somebody watching from Facebook that might need prayer for your family, your loved one. Or you might be or you might need prayer or you might own a business and you feel stuck in your business and you want prayer that God will give you insight on what to do with your business. We want to take a few minutes and pray for you guys. So all you have to do is type in the name, whether you're on Facebook, YouTube, Periscope, and we are, we, are, we will pray for that individual because I have 
uh, Brother D. Berry here, and he's going to share his testimony in a minute. I'm excited. I've been excited since last night when I caught uh, Brother D. Berry and asked him to join us on today. And, and, mm -hmm. and he said yes. And I went to work cre uh, creating a flyer and and I couldn't sleep. I ended up calling Ron and having a conversation with Ron. For those of y'all that don't know, Ron is the vice, the executive vice president of operation for the organization. And I called him and uh, sent him texts. I know they're going to be like that, that, David, if you don't stop texting me, <laughs> because I'm telling you guys, I'm, I'm excited about what God is doing through the whole gospel businessman fellowship. Um, we had a a business conference, the, the Kingdom Chamber of Commerce. We had a business conference on um, Friday, and we had six people join the fellowship on Friday. Amen. You know, so we we excited about uh, what God is doing. You know, all we got to do is just let God do what He want to do. Amen. And then we will see Him move in all of our lives if we just take time to uh, allow God to do what he wants to do. So if you guys, those that want prayer, all you got to do is, um, all you got to do is put it in, in, in the prayer thing. Um, so I am, I am, let me explain. I am the regional director for the Great Lakes region. That means I am over Minnesota, Michigan, Iowa, Northern Illinois and Wisconsin. So I, I just put up, if you are in one of those states and you want to um, be a part of a chapter or you want to start a chapter, my number is going across the screen. All you have to do is, um, is, is um, reach out to me and wherever you at, I will come to you and we can set that chapter up. I'm excited for what God is doing. So so what I, what I want to do um, right now is I'm going to turn the flow over to my brother. Um, matter of fact, y'all, this is the brother that 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 jump started me and got me back going and 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 uh, invited me to a meeting to speak and 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 um, he shared my name around the fellowship with other people and I was sharing with him about the 90 day challenge and. Um, so before before we give your testimony, let's talk about what's coming up August 27th through the 29th. Okay. Well, August 27th through the 29th, every year we have a North Carolina men's advance. And it's normally in March of each year, but this year, because of the pandemic, in North Carolina, you could only have uh, 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 25 people get together. And we normally have between 100, 150 people at this event. And this year we're expecting about 200. So we canceled and moved it to the last weekend in August, which is August the 27th through the 29th. And we are so excited about this event. We have men coming from all over the United States, as well as youth. We, we do a special thing with uh, young males between the age of 10 and 20. Last year, we had 45 males. This year, we're expecting 100. We're expecting 100. And we are so excited about it because we spend time with those kids, teaching those kids. And one thing we started about four years ago that you don't see in America, you don't see a young black 16, 17, 18-year-old black male with a 60, 70, 80-year-old white male. Most of the time, their lives never come together, especially not on a positive note. So uh, we have quite a few white men that attend our event. So when they attend our event, I get an opportunity to spend time with these black males. And it just breaks down barriers. It literally just breaks down barriers because they begin to see each other as humans, you know, uh, because you got a lot of black males that think, the white man is, you know, is even creating a lot of the issues that's in their lives. And the same thing with white men thinking the young black males are creating all these issues that's in the world today. Listen to the media. Well, let me go back a minute. In 2014, God spoke to my heart and it actually was prophesied by a prophet 
that God would use North Carolina to help break down racial barriers throughout the whole United States. And at that time, we didn't know how he would do it. I know that we had been working a whole lot with the youth, but then he began to put together a plan and he began to show me. And a lot of the white uh, Caucasian males that's been coming to the event has really caught on and bought into this and even the black youth. So they're actually helping us to spread this thing throughout the United States. And we're actually doing a digital book that's gonna be highlighted and it's gonna to come to life at this retreat where this digital book is put together by young black males. And we've already got ministries in New York, Chicago, Houston, Texas, that wants this uh, youth uh, book so that they can start teaching their kids about what God would do in their lives, about renewing their minds and stuff like that. So it's just a, a great environment. Another thing that's so exciting, you will meet people at this event for this weekend that you will become friends for life. We actually have people that meet that years later end up going on vacation together. Their families become that close. It's an anointed place. When you walk on there, you'll feel the anointing. And I promise you, I don't care what your title is in the world, you will get more out of this event than what the events will get out of you. And I'm not saying you won't offer a lot, but you will get a lot out of this event. It will be, it will revolutionize your life. So August the 27th through the 29th, uh, we're going to send the information to Dr. King and reach out to him. He'll be able to share more information on the event. Amen. Amen. Did you invite somebody to come on with you, a Durham? Yes. Yes. Oh, you brought, okay. Let oh, me bring. No, I, did. no I, I, well, I, I, I sent him the link, so it shouldn't have been done that way. No, no. They, they they were supposed to go. Well, let's bring let's bring him in anyway. Okay. Okay, there he is, uh, brother Daryl. You you just broke into the studio and <laughs> and, and, and and joined in. So welcome, brother Daryl. Well, thank you. I didn't know how it worked. I thought it was like a regular Zoom meeting, so I just clicked on in. <laughs> oh. I, I was thinking the same thing. I'm sorry. No, no, no. That's okay. He 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 done got backstage, so he can come on up. Uh, Daryl, where 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 are you located, Daryl? Right now, I'm in Myrtle Beach. You in Myrtle um, Beach, huh? Yes. Okay. But I am officially the vice president of the Durham chapter. Okay. All right. Yes. All right. Well, turn your camera a little bit so we don't get half of you. There, we, there you go. Now we get all of you. Uh, yeah, I'm sitting at the well, kitchen well, table. President, <laughs> it's good to have you on the show. You know, okay. I, I, I'm okay with that. I don't. I, I love to have fun on the show. We never know who show up. You <laughs> know, ain't nothing wrong with it. Ain't nothing wrong with it. So, 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 um, before, uh, before, um, uh, brother uh, D. Berry give his testimony. I want to say to the men that um that's going to uh um uh, looking for a, a, a retreat like this for us men and um the even the cost is unbelievable brother d bear tell them the cost it's 165 dollars for the whole weekend and that includes two night stay that includes five meals and a ton of snacks the kids love snacks so we've got Peanuts, chips, uh, honey buns, uh, all kind of snacks, uh, drinks for you to snack on the whole time you're there. So, yeah, for $165, you get five meals, two nights stay in a beautiful place. And I tell you, it's, uh, when you get the email and you click on uh, the place, which is Fort Casual, and just look at it, you're going to see, you're going to say, wow, just to come and relax. It, it, I mean, just to come and just see God's, I mean, it's right on the Cape Fear River. And so just to see God's glory, it's amazing. Wake up in the morning and see the sun rise over the Atlantic Ocean. It's amazing. So you definitely want to make this event. Yes. yes. 
I definitely, I definitely would be in the house. So, Amen. And, Amen. and we're going to uh, bring a couple of men from Milwaukee to come down with me. So we're excited. Um, what we're about to do right now is we're going to uh, turn Brother D. Berry loose so he can share his testimonies uh, about God in his life. So uh, Brother D. Berry, it's all on you. Amen. Listen, I want to just start off with, I always start off with this. And people don't really understand that it truly is a wonderful life. I watched a movie probably 30 years ago, which was Jimmy Stewart. It's a Christmas movie and it's called It's a Wonderful Life. <clears throat> and the, start, the movie starts off where Jimmy Stewart grows up in this city and he grows up and uh, he wanted to leave the city the whole time, but because of things happened, his father, death, he and up caught running their family business, which is a savings alone. Well, some things happen. His uncle misplaced some money and uh, he gets in trouble. So he prayed to God that he didn't exist. And God granted him that wish. God granted him that wish that, that he didn't exist. So as he went around the city with him not existing, he realized how important his life was to that community. He realized that there were several people that had died because he wasn't there to save the people when they were early, uh, earlier in their lives, things he did to save them. And because he didn't save them, there was other people that died later on. And then uh, there was uh, this wicked old man that was able to start his own uh, a residential area and was taking advantage of the people because the saving loan had, had folded and there was nobody there to run the savings and loan. So <clears throat> I watched that movie and, you know, you, the movie was built, I think it was, came out in the 30s or 40s. And you would say, what would a 25, 30 year old black man be watching this old movie? What would he get out of it? But that movie really spoke to me because it's a wonderful life because what God did, I was laying down one night and he began to show me my life. And he be, began to show me how just by me having conversations and even as a teenager, I actually stepped in front of a guy that pulled a gun on another guy, but I felt like the guy wouldn't shoot me. So the fact that I stepped in front of him, God showed me that that guy is living now because the guy put the gun up. Now, I mean, most of the time you think about that stuff now, it's kind of like crazy, but God began to show me how things would have turned out different in other people's lives if my life wouldn't have existed. And I share that with people because not only me, but all of us, all of us have made a difference in other people's lives that you're not aware of. And I tell you, just take the time to just lay down one day and ask God, you might not get it right that day, but over a period of time, he will show you why you've made a major impact on other people's lives where you didn't even think you did. And they don't even realize that you made that impact. So believe me, you've got a wonderful life. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what has happened in the past. You have made an impact on other people's lives. Amen. So just remember that. Remember that, that God got you here for a purpose and you have already fulfilled some of that purpose, regardless of what you're going through right now. Now, let me share you a little bit about myself. I, I have to start this off with talking about my parents because I come from a, a fascinating family. I, I was loved from day one, okay? My father, uh, I have to talk about my father, uh, the greatest man I ever known on earth. My father was a World War II veteran. Actually, as a World War II veteran, he actually was in a foxhole over in Germany. <clears throat> and our truck, the U.S., the United States Army truck, ran over the foxhole and crushed my father, cracked his reels, broke his leg, and bought him. So, you know, he lived, bought him back to the United States. They put him back together, uh, stayed in the hospital for six months. But um, my father was not content with being a disabled veteran. He worked his way back up uh, to a point where he wanted to uh, uh, 
uh, own his own business. So once he worked his way up, they showed him some businesses that he might be able to do with the injuries he had. And one of them was uh, real post and furniture. So my father came to, uh, uh, went to school, became a licensed upholsterer, uh, started working for a gentleman. And this is in the 50s. This is in the late 50s. My father was so good that he worked for this white gentleman who had about 10 upholsterers. And, you know, this is unusual in the 50s in the southern part of the United States. He worked for this gentleman, but when the, 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 the guy went on vacation, and my father, it was only two black upholsterers, but my father was so good that when the guy went on vacation, my father ran the business for him. And there was eight white guys up under my father. That's just how good he was. And again, we're talking about 1958, 1959. So he did that. Uh, my father always wanted to have his own business. So in 1966 to one, my father decided to leave uh, the gentleman and start his own business. Now, listen to what I'm getting ready to tell you. And that's why I tell you, if you got faith in God, if you just step out, if you believe, my father left this gentleman to start the business with nine kids. My mother never worked outside the house with a, 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 a house payment and with a, a car payment. And he left to start his own business with nine kids in 1966 one. And think about it now, at this time, they're still a lot of segregation, a lot of uh, um, racism going on where black people will get their business burned out or even hung for doing what my father did. But my father ended up doing that, ran the business, built it up to a huge level where the guy he left, the white guy ended up going out of business. My father ended up, literally ended up taking all his business. And a lot of the business that came with him was Caucasian business. They they will they will come to my father, and I just tell you how good God is. Is that uh, it's so amazing that when my father left, when my father was telling people that he was going to leave, the banks or nobody wouldn't help him. Now, after my father left and started his own business, he was driving one day, and he would borrow a person truck to make some deliveries. The truck boat broke down in front of the bank. The, the guy that, the manager of the bank came out, him and the uh, guy that owned the car lot, the guy came out of the bank and said, d Bear, I heard you finally left my man. Now I can give you that money now that you want since you left. I just couldn't get to you while you were still working for him. And then the guy that owned the car lot told him, <clears throat> he said, look, you were doing all the work for this guy anyway. So you come see me, I'm gonna put you in the truck and I, we will make a way for you to pay. You, I'll, I'll take the payments out of the work that you do for me. We'll work it out that way. So <clears throat> I just wanna show you <clears throat> how when you take one step, God will take two. God began to just work things out for him. Well, the building, my father had bought some land and there was another black family that was kind of well off. So they came to my father and told him, say, look, if you let us have half of the land to build our building on, we'll build a building for you. And they did that. So my father had a building that was free, that was paid for, and these people had a building that was paid for. So my father was able to operate the business. And I'm just sharing with you how God will work in your life. And all that is what made me the person that I am now. Again. My father was a real Christian, diehearted man. The whole time he gave God the credit and all that. My father was one that did send us to church. He went to church. It, we, we had to go to Sunday school or church every Sunday. And my father would take us to church. With, he, went to sun, he went to both of them. So that's what I grew up with. So I followed him all the way. And, and I watched him and I would go everywhere with my father. And at age 13, my father died. I was getting ready to turn 14. He died at age 47. At age 47, and my mom went with 40. 
And my father died at 47, leaving us with nine kids in the family business. Again, my mama had never worked outside the house, really. My mama didn't have time to moan. She missed, I know she missed her husband and everything like that. But my mom jumped right in and took control of the business and operated the business until my brother got old enough to take up take over. She took over my mom, I mean, with nine kids and working in the business and doing all the stuff that a mother has to do. She was still cooking every day, two or three meals a day, and still operating the business, which we had some employees, but she was overseeing all that. And my mom did that for eight or nine years. So this is where I come from. So I saw God working from an early age. I saw God working for an early age, but I just share, I just wanted to bring that up to this point and share my relationship with full gospel. When my father died, I was 13 years of age. And I probably would have been a different person if my father wouldn't have died because I was a, I was a very spoiled person and I literally got everything I wanted. Uh, uh, but I didn't wasn't a bad kid or anything like that. But I got everything. But I imagine if my father went to die, I probably would have been a little different. But anyway, when my father died, <clears throat> I promised my mama that I would not do anything to cause her any grief at age 13. So my mother never had to worry about me. I, I've never drank. I smoked a cigarette one day. And it's so crazy. I'm going to tell you how good God is. I was in the seventh grade, and this was actually before my father died. I was in the seventh grade, and it was on my birthday. And me and a little, me and a friend of mine were the same age. This guy smoked at, at 13 years old. But anyway, I was, he gave me a cigarette to smoke with him. And then later on that day, we got in a fight. And we got in a fight, and he went and told my mama that I was smoking. And he the one gave me the cigarette. My mama looked at me and she looked at me and just told me, you think you've grown now. To see the hurt in my mama's face, I said to myself, I didn't say nothing to her, but I said to myself, I would never do anything else to hurt my mama. And I did not drink. I did not smoke. I did not do any of those things the rest of my life. I, I, I have not done them. And even as a teenager growing up, my mama never put any curfews on me as a male growing up, but I made a commitment that the whole time I was in high school, I came home uh, during the weekdays by 10 o'clock on the weekends, no later than 11, 30, 12 o'clock. I just made that commitment that I did. I, won't, I wasn't going to go out. I wanted her because, like I said, I had some other siblings that didn't make those commitments and they were stressing my mama. So I just made a commitment that I wouldn't do it. My two younger sisters hated my guts growing up because if I told my mama not to let them go nowhere, they could not go. One of them was a year younger than me and one was three years younger than me. So if I told them, if I told my mama, no, they don't need to go, ah, uh, they could go with me. And they hated that. They hated that. And so that's what we did. So they would, uh, <clears throat> but they hate, they literally hated me growing up. And so, but anyway, I, I went through that phase. I, I was there for my mama. Uh, we had a great relationship. Uh, uh, I was a mama's boy. Uh, went off to college, graduated from college. Uh, when I got, graduated from college, the family business was struggling. I was working with Harris Teeters as a manager. The family business was struggling. I came back to work in the family business to help out the business. Uh, we got it back going. And then I started my own business, started an auto parts store. <clears throat> and I opened up, <clears throat> excuse me, opened up an auto parts store. And we ran that well. Things were going well. And then I decided to move the auto parts store to Durham, North Carolina. And things didn't work out. When I tried to move it, an uh, organization had committed to let me have the front, front, f funds to move it. And they, they reneged on it. So that kind of threw me in a whirlwind. But I always knew I was going to get back in my own business. So I had to sit back and work on getting back into my own business. And it took me about four years to do that. But let me go back a little bit. I forgot. In that time, uh, my wife, 
who's still my wife today, we literally started dating at age 14. We started dating at age 14. My wife, we started dating at 14. We got married at 24. And I'm 61 now. So me and my wife been together uh, 37 years of marriage, 47 years of being together. And I and I can tell you right now that that's the only woman that I've been with since we've been married. Uh, we have never been outside the marriage or anything like that. We've got a great relationship. And I, I give God the glory. I think God brought us. I'm all, I know God brought us together, at, even as teenagers, because it was almost like we knew even then that we were for each other. I thank God that I grew up with uh, my father, a business owner, and she grew up with her father was a business owner. And that's real important. That's real important when you're talking about a mate. She understood what it takes to be successful in business, that there's trials and tribulations and things like that. So that's that's been that that helped me a whole lot, helped us a whole lot in our relationship. We have two kids. I got a son, John Jr., and I got a daughter, John Rhea. I got uh, two grandsons, Xavier and Joshua. Uh, I'm, I'm a huge family man, do a lot of work in the community with the youth. But, uh, you know, God has just been a blessing uh, uh, to me all my life. Uh, when I was in my early 20s, I started a Boy Scout troop. And I'm only 25, 26 myself. But I had at one time 48 boys in my Boy Scout troop. And God led me. We did that for several years. And at the same time, I had the Boy Scout troop. God led me to start a youth summer league. So we started a summer basketball league where the kids would play Monday through Thursday. They would play basketball. And on Fridays, I would have a guest speaker, like the mayor, the sheriff, city council member, or state representative. They, they would speak to the kids on Fridays. Well, if the kids didn't show up on Fridays, then they couldn't play that next week. And we, this thing literally grew to like 250 to 300 kids over the summer participating in this event. So that was in my early 20s. Uh, we continued to work with kids and move on. And God began to show me things and how he just worked in my life. And I want to share this as I, as I get ready to close on this, is that you know, again, I share with you about my father dying at age 13. He had, he had a sister to die at 44, a sister to die at 45, a brother to die at 32, and another brother to die at 52. In 1999, my oldest brother died at 48. All these people died of heart attacks. All of them died of heart attacks. So my nephew in 2002 had a heart attack at age 26 years of age. Well, he lived. But we realized in that heart attack that one of the enzymes that our body naturally makes, sometimes our body would make too much of that enzyme. And when it made too much, it would cause our blood to clot. Now, we didn't go dig up my family members that have died, but I'm assuming that's why they died of the heart attacks. So what we did is we came, We I started doing research on herbs. I went from New Orleans to uh, um uh, Florida, Georgia, all the way up to Maryland, D.C., doing uh, attending conference about herbs, bought hundreds of books studying herbs. And we were able to come up with a supplement that you could take internally that purifies the blood and keeps the blood from clotting. So we we got that, that supplement that we take. Right now, I only uh, use it as a sample to friends and 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 um, uh, family members that want to take it. But since then, nobody's my family has died of a heart attack. Nobody's had that. The ones that are taking the supplements are, are doing okay. But at the same time, I found that those herbs that you could use internally were good for you to use externally. And so we came up with those products that where well, you could use uh, for your skin, one of the herbs are widely used over in Asia and the Middle East for eczema, psoriasis, 
diaper rashes and all kind of skin condition like that. So we come up and we started a company and we've got these products that we sell. They're organic products. And it's just been so exciting because what God has done for me is he's given me a purpose. First of all, in well, both of them are part of his ministries, but in his ministries, as far as helping the youth, because that's really what I focus on. I mean, I do a lot with adult males too, but my major goal, I love working with the youth. And so I use that for God. Then my other purpose is helping people to live healthy, productive lives. And, and that's one thing I love, being able to share with people uh, when they got illness going on in their bodies, natural things that will help them. And even most people don't understand, and I, I like sharing this stuff with people, 60% of the things that enter your body enter through your skin. And if you look at the last few major uh, lawsuits, they're against companies that, well, topical stuff got on the body. It's not a internal things, it's topical things that was being used, the talcum powder, the baby powder, uh, Roundup, those things like that that get on the skin from the outside because your skin is like a sponge. Believe me, you put stuff on your skin, it gets, in, it gets all the way into your bloodstream. So a lot of the issues that we're having, we focus on the foods we eat. But our body is so wonderfully designed that when it go in your stomach, a lot of that stuff is killed. The acid in your stomach is so strong that if it got in the other part of, parts of your body, it would kill you. So it, a lot of the stuff that goes in through your stomach, I'm not saying you shouldn't eat right, but a lot of stuff that goes in through your stomach is, is killed. But a lot of the stuff that's creating a lot of the major problems that's going on in our lives, is because of external products we're putting on our body, like the aluminum and underarm deodorant. You know, those are the type of things. So this is what God has shown me that he wants me to do the last 40 years of my life. He wants me to educate people and to help people to live healthy lives and also to, to work with the youth to help renew their mind so we go forward in this world because I am so excited. I believe in my heart that things are going the right way in this world where a lot of people might see it as negative. I think that things are going the right way. I think that I'm excited about uh, what's happening in America. Everybody else might see it as negative, but I see it as positive. I'm excited about uh, the black youth realizing who they are. I'm excited about uh, uh, the Caucasians realizing that we are people, humans just like them. And I'm telling you, in the next 20, 30, 40 years, you're going to see a big change in this country. I believe that. Can't nobody tell me no different because I'm, I'm, I'm excited about it. And I'm going to do my part of making sure that the kingdom of heaven is come to the earth and that everybody that uh, I come across realize that, that they are God and God is within them. And he wants them to succeed. He wants them to be healthy, even as their soul prospers. I want to thank you for giving me this opportunity to share my testimony. If anybody got any questions, because uh, I, I, I didn't want to go too long. But if you got any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. God bless you. Amen. I see we got somebody else um, in the back of the studio. So I'm going to bring them up into the studio and it's uh, Mary. Hi there, Mr. King, Dr. King. How are you? I'm good, how are you? I am good. You uh, you done raided the backstage of the, of the studio too, I see. <laughs> okay, I don't mind. I don't mind listening in the background. Oh, no, no, you on here now. You, 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 uh, you done got in now, so you actually on the show. So you are being seen on YouTube, Facebook, Periscope. So um, I, what chapter are you with? The Durham, Raleigh Durham, <laughs> 
chapter full gospel with my husband. Okay, and your husband is? Melvin Spate. Okay, now we got a woman on here, so we're gonna, we gonna, we gonna drill her real quick. I'm not supposed to be out here, John. No, you're fine. No, you're fine. <laughs> you're fine your now. You, you're, your on, there? you're on here now. So, <laughs> so, so tell I'll, me, tell me, Mary, why did you join Full Gospel Businessman Fellowship International? I didn't. I'm just, I'm, I'm supporting my husband. I didn't join. Okay. You're, <laughs> you're supporting your husband. Yes. What do you like about it to support him with the fellowship? Well, the fellowship that does that goes on in the community, involving and pulling the community in, in terms of, you know, um, helping those who are less fortunate, having compassion for them, but also raising up men and uh, women and families, the things that do to support families. Okay. Uh, Vice President Durrell, you might as well, yes, unmute, you might as well unmute yourself. and uh, I'm unmuted now. Okay. Why don't you tell everybody why you joined for a gospel? Uh, actually, I joined the organization, I want to say, maybe about 11, 12 years ago. And... Hey. Say that with, again. Uh, uh, chemical dependency, alcohol, and I met John D. Berry, and he began to talk to me about some things and show me some different things, and I began to go to the meetings, and it turned my life around. So I became a member, and I've been a part ever since. Okay. So did you ex did you accept Christ at a meeting? Or did you accept Christ before the meeting? I accepted Christ a long time ago. I was in a backslidden state uh, because I wanted to do what I wanted to do in the world. And um, it helped me hit it. Full gospel helped me find my way back. Let's put it like that. All right. Okay. Now, any one of y'all can answer this one. I'm a businessman. I'm working hard in my business because I want to provide for my family and I don't have time for church. Sound familiar? <laughs> yeah, real familiar. Hey, what would you tell me or what would you do uh, to help me get to Christ? Well, you don't have to go into a church building Christ is, Christ is already within you. You just have to get get you have to get with yourself and acknowledge Christ in you. He's already there. You just have to realize it and accept him there. Okay. You See, were born with the spirit of Christ in you. I just I just knew you was going to say, "Well, I was going to invite you to a meeting, let you hear this powerful testimony." <laughs> you know because you got to understand some people um and i myself i i um uh, i'm a business consultant uh i'm a business coach um i work with companies helping them find employees and i led more people to the lord in my office you know because that's you know in in um, in places that, you know, we, we can always say, come to church, go to church, go to church and find God. But if you tell me on a Tuesday to go to church and find God and I die on Thursday, I'm in trouble. <laughs> you know, so that's one thing that I love about uh, the fellowship is we always making sure somebody accept Christ, you know, that somebody gets saved, that somebody gets set free, that somebody uh, can get delivered. Why? Because they see God moving outside the church. I, I used to always say that the revival is going to start, but it ain't going to start in the church. It's going to start outside the church. It's going to start in places that we never expected to start. You're going to start seeing people coming for jobs and getting the Holy Ghost. You know, I mean, these are the areas where God really wants to move. And that's one of the main reasons why I, um, Love the Full Gospel uh, Businessman Fellowship 
because it's outside of the church. To go to a meeting uh, with the leadership and watching all the leaders speak in tongues, you know, that's amazing. You know, you you be thinking, I'm going to go see that at church. No, no, no. We see these at a meeting where, when we on Zoom and all of us together and we speak and everybody is speaking in tongues. Everybody is filled with the Holy Spirit, you know, being baptized. You know, people can get baptized in their office. You know, that's the part that, that, that God is doing is saying, listen, you don't have to go in that building with the steeple. I will fill you in your office. I will fill you with the spirit of God in your office. I will fill you at a business meeting. Do let, let me give a testimony. At our business conference that we just had, it, the, the, the spirit of God just took it over. I mean, people thought they was literally at a church service. We're talking business now. We're talking about how to grow your business. We're talking about, you know, having a vision with, uh, for your business. We're talking, I mean, we're talking business. We're using business lingo. We're, you know, we didn't pull out a Bible. You know, we didn't have a Bible there, you know. But, but in the process, because God is free, you know, we don't have to go. When you're in a, in a business setting, you're not going by a church program. God can just take over the business meeting. And that's the part I love about it. And, and you know, and then it, and it pulls out from, uh, from the office to the community, to the city. You know, it, it's, a, it's just an outpouring of the spirit of God. And, we, and, and, and with the four guys are businessmen. We're starting with the men. We're hitting the women. Now the children. So now we got the family again. You know, and that's the amazing part of the fellowship is pulling the family together and getting the family to love the Lord. And the men um, are taking our rightful place in Christ Jesus with our family. Amen. 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 Let me ask you this. Is, is this going to be your first event you're attending this month? Oh, we had that event already. It was Friday. No, he, so, he, okay. he's talking about our event. You're talking about our, um, the one, our means August, event? Yeah, August 27th, yeah. Yeah, yeah. this would be his first one attending. Okay, well, you, you'll see how our, event, how our events go. It's not a church. It's plenty <laughs> of fun and freedom, basketball, swimming pool, fishing. But when we go into the meeting and we get into invoking the spirit of God, then you'll see exactly what you were just talking about. Oh, yeah. Grown men, praising the Lord, crying of all nationalities. You know, that's yes. what really attracted me. Now, my first one, I was in there with Caucasian men, uh, Hispanic men, you know, and they were in there praising the Lord and crying. And, you know, for me, you know, I always cried when I got touched with love, but I tried to hide it. You know, I didn't want nobody to see it. But these men were openly worshiping God and praying. And, that's, and that kind of set me free to be able to do what I do when I'm in the presence of God. So yes. you'll see it. If you, you come to this on the 27th, you'll see for yourself. Daryl, let me show you something, Daryl. You see this right here, Daryl? Yeah, I, I see a, a book. It's I called The it's called the 90 day challenge. Okay. This right here, Daryl, is so powerful. That's the thing that I love about God because God is not in a box. We are in the box. God is not in a box. Exactly. So, 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 so when God wants to do something, we just got to be open and say, okay, God, whatever you want, do it. Yeah, and, my prayer, yeah. and my prayer to God is this. I tell God all the time. God, you can trust me. Whatever you want to do, you can trust me. I'm gonna do it. Whatever you want to do. So Darryl, he's he's going to be teaching, uh, not one of the major sessions, but you know the time we have between lunch and dinner. Yeah, we're, we're going to give him an hour and a half to teach his ninety day uh, uh, event, and he's going to share with you how you can start teaching his 90 day uh, course. Okay. Well, he's gonna be doing that while he's at our, our retreat. Uh, okay. So that's, that's gonna be awesome. That's gonna be yeah. awesome. Yeah. Now, we, we only got a few minutes, so I wanna make a, a, an announcement, a save the date announcement. The Great Lakes region 
um, is having our first uh, re uh, regional conference uh, September 17th through the 19th. And we're going to be in Milwaukee. Right now we're working on the venue where we're going to have it, but it's going to be three nights, uh, three days, Friday night, worship, uh, and, and fellowship, and Ron, Executive Vice President Ron will be the speaker on Friday night. The President Mike will be the speaker Saturday, and then I will speak on Sunday. So we're looking to have a great, 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 I, I love to say it great, because anything God does, he does it great. Amen. So we're going to have a great event um, the 17th through the 19th of September. And if God, gonna, if God moved the way he did in the business conference, I know Milwaukee is going to have an outpouring of the spirit of God like never before. So I'm excited about that. Uh, Brother D. Berry, um, we got a few minutes, and I want you to do a prayer for those who might be watching that have not opened their heart up for the Lord yet. And, you know, and just walk them through a prayer of salvation that they might give themselves to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Father, for giving us this opportunity to come to you. Father, you said in your word that for those who believe, for those who believe and those who receive and accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior shall be saved. I thank you, Father, that there's people on this call that are going to say the words as I say them. Say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. I thank you for coming in my heart right now, for giving me of my sins. And I receive, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. And I don't walk in sin no more. I thank you that every cell in my body is filled with the light of Christ. Yes. And I am totally healed not only spiritually, but physically and mentally. And God, again, I thank you. And I rejoice right now. I rejoice because I am a new creature. I am a new creature. Everything before this moment is gone. I am a new creature right now. And Father, I give you all the honor and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 We want to thank every all of our um, all of our um, audience from Facebook, YouTube, Periscope. Uh, we thank you. I thank all the guests, those that uh, uh, broke in, raided the place. <laughs> we want to thank you guys. Uh, we will be here next Saturday. I mean, next Monday night. We will have um, someone from probably overseas uh, giving their testimony and sharing with us in this um, in the Great Lake Region uh, show. Um, we're going to be sharing testimonies from around the world, uh, different people that's part of the fellowship, so we can see that God is dealing with ordinary people and doing extraordinary things. So I'm excited. So I thank everybody uh, for being there. If you would like to be a member of a chapter or you, or you would like to start a chapter in your area, my number is going across the screen. You can give me a call. I am David D. King, and I am the regional director for the Great Lakes region. So uh, we thank you guys for watching. We love you guys. And until next time, may God smile upon you.